Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and SoapQueen.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make solid bubble bath. I swear, this is a question I get asked almost daily at Brambleberry. How do I make that awesome solid bubble bath? Well, I've tested recipes for almost a year and a half, and finally I came up with one that's super simple but actually works every time. I can't wait to show you how to make it. So this is a solid bubble bath and basically you take it and you just crumble little bits of it off underneath running water and it makes giant fluffy huge bubbles in your bathtub that last for quite some time. For this project today we're going to be using the fragrance oil of Celestial Waters from Brambleberry.com. It smells kind of like a hmm, florally fruity mountain stream, it's so yummy. But you could use any fragrance or essential oil that you want. It's like a watermelon or a pearberry for a fun fruity fragrance or for a more relaxing fragrance like a lavender essential oil. started we're going to mix up the wet ingredients first. Take 1.8 ounces of castor oil, 7 ounces of liquid glycerin, and 0.7 ounces of celestial water fragrance oil. These are all by weight. Mix them all well together. Notice they're not really mixing in all that easily at first. Keep mixing. You want them to be fully mixed in before you add them to your dry ingredients. This is looking a lot better. Notice how it's getting a little thicker? That's perfect. It looks fully mixed in. Set this aside and we're going to move on to the dry ingredients. Make sure there's no fan going because since these are dry ingredients, they can become airborne extremely easily. In fact, if you have any sort of sensitivity or your nose tends to get ticklish, you can always wear a mask during this portion. I actually don't feel a lot of sensitivity to powder, so I'm not going to be working with a mask, but do whatever feels right for you and your sensitivity and of course your airflow. I sift all of my dry ingredients just to make sure they're evenly mixed. Add 10.1 ounces of baking soda or sodium bicarbonate. Use a little spoon or a mini spatula to kind of push those last little clumps through. All right, those are through. Then 7.4 ounces cream of tartar. Do the same with the cream of tartar. Next is 2.7 ounces of cornstarch. And finally, 0.6 ounces of tapioca powder. If you want to add dry colorant like a mica, do it now. Now is the ingredient that adds all of our fluffy bubbles. It's a synthetic foaming agent, commonly referred to as SLSA. It's long term is sodium lauryl sulfa acetate, and it really goes airborne. So try not to stir and mix too much at this point. Pour it into your sieve. Now gently work it through the sieve. Okay, get any last clumps out. Now carefully mix this. I'm using a whisk but you could use a large spoon or a giant spatula. Before I put on my gloves and start mixing the wet and the dry together, one final step. Put out a piece of freezer paper with a little bit of baking soda just kind of on it, similar to if you were baking a pie crust and put flour out. Just a little sprinkling. Okay, now set this to the side. Now put on some gloves and pour your wet ingredients into your dry. You're gonna use some sort of stirring implement, so I'm gonna use a whisk right here and just slowly work those wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. Do not be too vigorous. We do not want the dry ingredients just foof, 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 foofing out on you. Okay, now it's starting to kind of be mixed in and I am definitely seeing where I should have used a spatula instead of a whisk. Let's try a spatula, see if I have slightly easier, better results with that. There we go, I see the dough kind of forming. So when the dough is definitely not really getting any tighter or a better consistency with your spatula, it's time to switch to your hands. Knead and just work this dough, kind of like you would do Play-Doh or pie crust or something like that. Once your dough is nicely formed and is sticking together, divide the dough in half and place one half in another container. We're going to be using lab colors, which are a water-based colorant to color this. If you were going to use a dry color, like a mica colorant, you would have added it in the dry powder phase. Add 12 milliliters of diluted emerald lab color to one of your sides. Add 15 milliliters of blue mix lab color, fully diluted of course, to the other side. 
with your gloves on, because this will stain your hands otherwise, start mixing your colors in. This does take a little bit of elbow grease, so don't be surprised if you start wanting to take a break. Don't take a break. It keeps stirring. This is looking really good, but I am noticing I've got a lot of this green on my hand and I don't want to transport it over to the blue side, so I'm just going to change out my gloves. Knead and mix in that Blue Mix Lab Color. Make sure it's fully mixed in. You don't really want any white, uncolored pieces in there. Once your colors are fully mixed in, take that freezer paper that you set aside earlier, start glopping the blue on top of the freezer paper. Kind of flatten it out a little bit. All right. Now, go ahead and put the green on top of the blue and start patting them together. I'm doing this with my hands. I suspect some of you might want to actually put another piece of freezer paper on top of this and roll it out. Of course, if you do that, sprinkle it with a little bit more baking soda so the freezer paper doesn't stick. Okay, these two sides are sticking together nicely. Now kind of try and form this into a little bit of a square or a rectangle, just something that actually has 90 degree angles. That looks good. Now, this is the tricky part. If you've ever rolled sushi, you'll be super good at this. Just fold up the dough slowly and carefully. It's okay if a little bit of it sticks on the paper and then peel the paper back. Okie dokie. Keep doing this until you have a giant solid bubble bath log. Now we have our giant log, but this paper is kind of messy. So transfer this to a whole new piece of fresh freezer paper. You don't have to put the baking soda on this one. Now go ahead and roll it and fold it over and just start slowly compressing your solid bubble bath log. There you go, start moving it in from the sides, kind of just press down on it. It needs to be tight enough as a roll that it'll stick together and stay nice when you cut it. This looks good, it looks pretty compact. I'm gonna go ahead and try and cut. Now remember, if your roll is not staying together, stop immediately. Fold that paper over it again and start rolling and squeezing again. This needs to stay together now because if it doesn't stay together now, it's not going to magically stay together later. Take a sharp, non-serrated knife and just cut gently down. These are very, very, very delicate right now still. So you notice how this is still very, very, very squishy. We're gonna let this dry for three to five days after you cut the entire log. So just keep cutting. Keep cutting, you may have to move one or two out to kind of space them. Once it's all cut, I want you to just wait three to five days before trying to use these or before trying to sell them. These work best if they're popped into a little airtight cellophane bag, after drying of course, for three to five days. You want these to be moist, but not totally brittle so people can easily crumble them under their running water. Do you wanna see how one works? To use this solid bubble bath, just break off a piece of it and start to crumble it. It's very simple. It crumbles extremely easily in the hands. Then take these crumbles and put them under warm running water. These work best with a little bit of agitation. You can actually just kind of agitate the water yourself, but it's easier just to have the running faucet do it for you. Now you'll notice that this is coloring the water a nice green blue color. If you don't want colored water in your bathtub, decrease the amount of colorants used in this recipe by 25%. These bubbles are so fluffy and they stick around for a long time in the tub. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Soap Queen TV. Enjoy making your solid bubble bath. And until next time, happy soaping. if you're at all sensitive, you might want to put on a mask while you're mixing your dry ingredients. <laughs> For the dry ingredients, I sift every single one of them through a whisk. First I'm going to be, is that a whisk? No. <laughs> whisk, sieve, whatever. <laughs> okay.